So when we got married, we were pretty young and we wanted to have that time with ourselves. But when the time started to think about children, it became a little more difficult because I have some health issues. It was kind of a struggle at first to maybe admit that I wasn't ever going to conceive my first child. I can't tell you how many times I said, oh, we should probably start trying for kids probably in the next year. And it was just year after year after year, it's gonna be next year. Jessica was just out to lunch with her mom one day, just started talking like, yeah, maybe we should start this adoption process. And that same day at the same time, I was at work and I was just thinking, hmm, I think we should start the adoption process. As soon as we decided that, it was just like a freight train that couldn't be stopped. Paperwork was completed, home study was done within weeks, and we were approved with our agency within three days after our home study was done. I would say that was probably one of the most humbling experiences because I was able to be on the opposite side of it. I'm adopting a child. I am an adopted child. I don't have to look like my adoptive parents in order for them to feel like they're my parents and be loved and accepted into a community. And I love that concept and I've always wanted that for my future family. A baby became available a few days after we got approved for our agency. We were on cloud nine like, there's a baby available, let's go, let's do this. And we made a huge mistake telling everyone. I got a phone call one day I just wanted to let you know you did not match. We decided from then on that if a baby becomes available, no one's gonna know about it until we get a very different phone call. Probably a week later, there was another situation that popped up and immediately we're just texting our social worker saying, yes, we're interested, we'll do anything we can. We were just in shields in the middle of the aisle and Jessica gets a phone call. And I was just fully prepared to hear a no. When she answered the phone, it was a very different tone. Hey Jess, how's it going? Oh good, is Ryan with you? As soon as I heard, is Ryan with you? I just knew, I'm like, here we go, buckle up. I'm about to feel like I'm gonna pass out because I'm just like, could this be it? And then she said, congratulations, you've been matched. We immediately just started bawling our eyes out in the middle of chills. It is one of the most happy feelings I've ever felt in my life, and I legitimately cried the entire drive home. Like the whole day. It was oh, yeah, a it very... Was emotional and just amazing that a mother chose us. Ever since Ryan was around 10 years old, he would constantly say how he's always wanted to adopt, two little black babies and two little Asian babies, which is super not characteristic for a normal kid to be talking about. Since he was that age, we always knew he would be the best dad. He just has always been so cute with little kids. And for him to be saying at that young of an age that he wanted to adopt, and we just all knew that that would come to fruition. Having Jessica and Luke in this child's life, being these adopted people as well, may be something that he will relate to sometime. And especially the fact that Jessica and Luke are both people of color, because this is gonna be a beautiful dark baby and he'll be able to see his beautiful mother with her dark hair and her dark eyes and then his uncle, Luke, who is my son, who's half Jamaican, half Caucasian. I just think that it's gonna be a perfect fit for little Sonny. Everything feels committed, but there's always that chance that the mother can change her mind. We have to be prepared that this could be a failed adoption. She was scheduled to be induced on Wednesday, and this was Sunday when we received the phone call, so it was just like, oh my gosh, her water broke. What do we do? And there's nothing we could do other than just get excited, and Jessica was out at the mall, and I was at home playing Xbox, and she's like, I'm coming home right now, and we just wanted to be together because it was just such big news. and. 10.44 p.m. that same Sunday, we got a text saying, he's here. The Utah state law says that the mother has 24 hours to change her mind on whether or not to place the child. And so we could not sign our paperwork until Monday night after 10.44. It's sign time. No, like literally what time is it? It is. It's past 10.44. <laughs> 
also a really strange thing is with COVID-19, two people are allowed in the hospital to go get the baby. And so, okay, here we go. Our social worker and Jess get to go get the baby and, and meet him first. I'll be waiting outside, waiting outside with everyone else and- oh Nothing's on our turn, Not so. one thing, nothing we've done that's been our choice. The experience of adopting a yeah. child is oh. so unique on top of this virus where I can't even go in the hospital to meet my child. I was supposed to be inside with our social worker in about 20 minutes. Just crazy, we're gonna be meeting our kid in 20 minutes. <laughs> yep. Right now it's just like... I just got butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> my stomach just dropped thinking about it. It doesn't. It did not seem real until we started talking about this topic. Get all spiffied. Here we go. I'll let you take over the passing. Look at his little pout. Mm. He's gonna get mad that I took it out. <laughs> what a pacifier. Blood on 